One of the most famous diagrams in astronomical physics is the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, which shows the relationship between a star's brightness and its colour. The colour is typically measured on a BV index, whilst the luminosity might be measured in watts or given relative to a standard reference such as the Sun. The BV index is related to temperature, with higher BV values corresponding to lower temperatures. Hot, bright stars are located in the upper left part of the plane, and cool, dim stars are located in the lower right. I used Wolfram Alpha to request data for the luminosity and BV index for the nearest 100 stars and for the brightest 100 stars. Stored in these tables. Measurement data couldn't be retrieved for all of the stars, but were obtained for the 54 nearest and 88 brightest stars. The notation used here, if you haven't seen it before, is common in engineering and scientific applications to denote a power of 10. So this number here is 1.0349 times 10 to the power of 30. You can see that we're dealing with very large values for the luminosity. The shaded cells indicate that five of the stars belong to both sets, the nearest and brightest. The sun is one of them. Putting these two data sets together gives us values for 137 stars to plot. I've stored the data in an Excel workbook with headed columns. It's located here in my current MATLAB folder. Let's double click it and see what MATLAB does with it. We can see that the names of the stars are in the first column, the BV colour index is in the second column, and the luminosity is in the third column. MATLAB wants to only import the numerical data, which is highlighted here. Let's do that now by clicking the check mark. It tells us that the variables have been successfully imported. The column headings were used as variable names. Both variables are stored as column arrays and we can double click on them to see them. Now let's try plotting the data. It looks a mess because MATLAB has joined up the points. Let's specify a plot style. The data are now plotted as round plot markers, but the plot still looks a mess. Data on the vertical axis vary over several orders of magnitude, so it's more sensible to plot the data on a log scale. Powers of 10 are easier to interpret than powers of the natural exponent, and so this is one occasion where we want to use log 10 instead of the log function in MATLAB. We can see that there appears to be a weak negative trend for most of the data points. To quantify the strength of a linear relationship, we could measure the covariance, which is something that we'll learn to do at a later date. The term log linear is sometimes used to refer to a graph which is logarithmic on one scale and linear on the other scale. A linear trend on a log linear scale is indicative of an exponential relationship between the original variables. Although it's worth noting that in this case, the BV index is already a logged quantity. Now let's label the axes.
We need to take care with the vertical axis because what we've shown here is not the luminosity but is rather the log of the luminosity. This is a logarithmic quantity plotted on a linear scale. If you look through the scientific literature, you'll see that it's more common to plot untreated data on a logarithmic axis. We can do this in MATLAB by using the semilog y function, where the inputs are not logged. In this case, the values which are shown on the vertical axis provide the actual luminosities. Let's compare the two plots side by side by using subplot. We've seen how to do this before. We we'll create a new figure, and in this case, we'll have a 1 by 2 array of subplots. first one will be for the log data on a linear scale. And the second one will be for the original data on a log y scale. We can see that the shape of both plots is the same and that apart from a difference in the padding here, which is just a case of adjusting the y limits, the only difference between the two plots is the way that the vertical scales are represented. Here we have the log of the y data, and here we have the original y data. Which type of plot you use is down to personal preference, but it's essential to be clear about what is shown, including the units. As well as the semilog y function, you can also check out the semilog x function for cases where only the x-axis needs to be logged, or the log log function for cases where both axes need to be logged. To finish off, let's plot the Hertzsprung-Russell scatter diagram using data for approximately 36,500 stars, which were downloaded from Wolfram Alpha. I'll make some changes to the plot options here, although you could also do this from the property editor menu. Let's change the marker style to filled dots. Let's change the marker size. And let's change the color to black. We can enter black as a string, and MATLAB will recognize that, or we can enter its RGB value, which is 000. zero, zero. Let's have a look at the figure that we've created. The pattern here is much less clear than it was before, and this is due to the fact that the star catalogues include data for stars of a variety of types. For instance, we would see bright red giants, such as Beta Gru, appearing in the cool red part of the plane over here.